we got a new ITL for you, and our host is going to be in the batter's box catching fire for me <laughs> up in Sato's place. <laughs> Oh, hey, guys. I love your new polo bag. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it matches my polo shirt it's, from last week. It's beautiful. It's starting a new line. Yeah. yeah. Hey, thanks, thanks everybody. Thanks for, for, for uh, joining us. Last week, we told you we were going to have Mike Shipley on today. One of the things I, I want to take the time to let you guys know, uh, everybody we bring you on the show is, is working. And, and a lot of times, uh, their schedules are hectic and unpredictable. Uh, <clears throat> And every once in a while, we're going to have someone that can't make it. Uh, this week, Mike had a personal uh, emergency to take care of, something that uh, uh, just keep him in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, but we'll, we'll see him real soon. And um, we've got, um, uh, we've made real serious headway in terms of the three most popular guests you asked me about. I spoke with two, and uh, it looks like we're going to be able to get. Uh, those people on the show soon, and I've spoken with several others. So we've got a good uh, uh, next next three or four months coming up for you. Got some good ITLs. Mm -hmm. uh, what am I leaving out, Herb? <coughs> Nothing other than um, why am I doing this? Because uh, why am quirky. I doing why am I doing this? Uh, you're just a quirky kind of guy. However, I'm not. So but I'm used to doing this. Uh, but let me get on to some like business, if I could. <laughs> so uh, we want to get to our homework as usual. We obviously want to thank our uh, our partners, Vintage King. They're in the yes. uh, corner office with us. Drew Towson's there this time. Hey, Drew. Alex got a break. And uh, so Drew's in there answering your questions. Vintage King is always with us. Thanks to Vintage King. But no, not, to be con not to be confused with our Drew. They weren't. Only okay. you are. Our Drew is living in the lap of luxury this week in Hawaii, oh, asking my man. on uh, the shores of Oahu. He didn't get permission for that, so but we'll, we'll dock him <laughs> later. Uh, let's get to our homework stuff. Uh, reach us at Facebook, as you usually do. Um, our chat room is powered by Ustream. Um, you obviously can Twitter us. You see the information up on the screen right now. Um, thanks for your comments. We have a bunch, and we always welcome those. Helps inform us. And yes, we've had... Uh, a really interesting week. We had an interesting interview for, God, like an hour plus, huh? You want to tell them who that was with? Alex. Alex who? Alex the Kid. Alex the Kid. And uh, uh, it, was, it was fascinating. Yeah. And he's a or as he's known south of the border, Alex El Nino. Oh, there you go. There from, you go. For, from, 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 from my Latin buddies on Facebook. Uh, but... Um, Did you ever notice how many times your elbow slips? You know what? Off the desk um, because it they, does they it, notice. It does it a lot. Uh, <clears throat> I had a little medical problem this year, and I don't have well, all my feeling back in my arm. And sometimes I can't tell when I'm at the edge. You have a slippery elbow <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to screw everything. I'm just going to slide closer. Uh, there we go. Anyways, we had a great time with Alex. and uh, Incredible. I tell you what. When that comes up, you guys will be really mm -hmm. interested in seeing that. It's, it's, a, it's a really I, interesting I learned, future. I learned a lot from mm -hmm. Alex. In fact, the... the, the I went back and, and, and you, know, you know, like speed reading, I kind of fast-forwarded through a lot of our shows. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Once again, I gleaned information that uh, that I didn't know was there. And, I, you know, I mean, I, I sat through the shows, got a real sweet message from Phil Tan this week. Cool. Phil's, cool. Phil's got some new stuff on the radio that just sounds incredible. Yeah, and same here. You're, again, your comments are great. We get a lot of comments on a lot of different things. So mm -hmm. we're going to keep evolving, keep moving, and... Keep it popping. You've um, we got a new ITL this week, correct? Yeah, uh, I kind of wanted to ease back into the ITLs for you. Um, I, I get a lot of questions that are just impossible to answer with an ITL, so I tried to weave a few of those in that, that we'll be going over with this week and next week, and then um, I, the ITL is kind of self-explanatory. I won't, I won't, you know, yeah. do what I always do and, and all that. Uh, are we ready, Will? Let's roll it. Let's roll it. ITL. What's up? How you doing? ITL. Oh, gosh, it's been such, what's been like seven or eight year hiatus for ITL, Will? Uh, in case you're new to the show, which a lot of you are, and I really appreciate that, 
uh, into the lair is what we call this segment. Herb came up with that idea. I, I think it's a great, uh, great title, Into the Lair. And then once you've been watching the show a few, uh, few minutes, you'll, you'll get used to the ITL concept. But, uh, oh, look at this. Hey, guys, you know what this is? Can you see that, Will? My good friend Cliff Mogg, M-A-A-G, Cliff Mogg with Mogg, M-A-A-G, audio, sent me this the other day, and I've just fallen in love with it. It's a, um, a 500 series um, mic pre. It's just, it just sparkles. They're some of the top of the line preamps in terms of clarity and stuff. Check, check, check Cliff's website out, uh, Mog Audio, M-A-A-G. Uh, he's a good cat, somebody we ought to support. So I was talking to Jason Joshua yesterday, and Jay, uh, I always learn when I talk to Jay. We were talking about uh, the JJP episode, and we were talking about compression and stuff. And um, I was telling him I was going to film a ITL, a new ITL, another one today. And he was like, "Man, y'all, y'all talk about um, side chaining." And I thought, mm, "That's kind of boring." But then I started thinking about it, and thought, "Man, I, I th- I'm, I'm going to show you guys some stuff. Uh, it has much broader, broader applications as J." Pointed it out to me. Here comes my assistant engineer right now. <laughs> Hold something, buddy. Come on, buddy. Okay, check this out. I've got a kick drum and a bass going. And um, so my, my kick drum. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to put uh, Renaissance compressor on the bass track. We're going to take and, and tell the uh, compressor to get its information from uh, bus six. <clears throat> so bus six. And then we're going to take the kick drum. I've duplicated the kick drum so just for this so that I can send it to nowhere. I'm sending it to nowhere. And then I'm sending bus six from that, that kick drum and letting the kick drum influence the side chain. So uh, I've got this thing uh, solo isolated. Okay, now let's, let's, I want you to focus on on the kick, okay. Now bring this in. Now the kick didn't go up in volume. The bass is dropping in, in, in a little bit in volume, but mostly what the bass is doing is it's 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 not, it, the compressor is actually taking off a little bit of the low end. Hear the hear the low end kind of kind of go away. It drops about a half a dB. Uh, we can make it drop more if we want. Now let's see what happens. I'm gonna exaggerate the threshold. Now let's try. Let's see what happens if we shorten the release. That gives us one kind of vibe, like Jack Joseph said, long. So you see, you see, like, dun, dun, gives us one kind of feel. And that gives us another kind of feel. This was kind of what I kind of, kind of liked. Uh, now the attack is, 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 watch. Let me exaggerate it again for you.
Okay, now those two factors are going to determine your, your rhythm. Okay? Now, Will's going to stop for just a second. I'm going to, I'm going to put it in, in the track so you can kind of get a feel for what it's doing. Okay, let me show you a section. This is a section here in the song where uh, it's okay. We, 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 we probably wouldn't we probably aren't really that concerned about the bass, you know? Actually, I just started on this song, so a lot of, a lot of the parts you're not hearing. But um, I, just, I just really was kind of excited about showing this to you. Now, when we get to the chorus, let's, let's put the kick in. And this is without it. You, you see what I'm saying? It, it makes you feel like the kick got louder when when the bass goes down because the bass isn't covering up the low frequencies from the low frequencies from the kick. Uh, I, I, a lot of you guys are kind of confused about how to dovetail the different frequencies at the bottom end and one, one of the ways is just let somebody win the battle so in this case we're letting the uh, the kick drum win the battle um, but that's a good use of um, of sidechain compression and that's the same exact technique that that you can use in in, in like uh, dance music like some of David Guetta's stuff I hear a lot of a lot of side chaining. Um, it's a great technique. You can you, in 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 some rock circles, what 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 you do is something very similar. But but in some rock circles, we call it ducking, where you'll take the compressor and and do the opposite, so that the compressor is controlling the level of the guitar. And every time, and you and you feed the vocal into the side chain. So what happens? is when the guitar, when the vocal is going the 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 compressor ducks the guitar for you a preset amount and then when the vocal stops the guitar rises um, at a certain rate and 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 so it saves you from having to ride the level of the guitar in that case we call it ducking i guess um, it's not as popular as as side chaining but it's the same concept if you look at some of the analog gear from the 60s and 70s, they actually have a ducking feature on a lot of them. But you can do the same thing with, 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 with what we're doing now. All right. I, I wanted to show you a couple of things. I got some new pieces of gear I thought I'd share with you while we're, uh, we're loosely jumping around. I mentioned the low end. Let me solo something for you real quick here. Here's the kick drum. Let me, let me get a good little spot here. I wanted to add Okay. Now check this out. I just got this from Waves today. This is the new MPX. Subtle but good, huh? Pretty cool. It just it just adds a nice round bottom end. Uh, you could EQ this in, but but there's there's so many other factors involved. It's it's emulating the way it's hitting tape, and so there's there's a compression component, there's an increased harmonic component, there's um, uh, almost like an equalizer you know component. But I, I I put this on today and I messed with it a little bit. I really liked it. In fact, I liked it so much, I think I'm going to save it. I wonder if it uses more electricity when the, we when the reels are turning or not. Anyway, pretty cool piece of, pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. And then, and then uh, my buddy Stephen Slate, uh, this little blue kick, we're, we're not listening to that. That's just what we're using to send to bus six. I felt like on this song, um, we could, uh, 
uh, I ripped off a sample from uh, uh, one of David Guetta's songs, and um, I added that. Watch this. Without it. With it. Might have gone nuts. This little, this little equalizer, they're hard to find. I don't even think they make it anymore. Man, I love the low end on this. So, a couple of quick things. Um, um, some someone I, I, I didn't catch his name mentioned about side chaining a gate. Um, I think we showed you that in a in a previous ITL. I do that a lot. Like like say you you'll have a guitar part and you can side chain it. Take a high, take a quarter note hi hat and and just put an echo on that, and then send that to the side chain of a gate. And so your guitar can be da 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 you know like that with a gate. Good idea. Thanks for that. Um, also. I, I can't remember if I said it her, but uh, I take all my instruments and I run them to an aux, and you can you can side put a compressor on that on that uh, aux that has all the instruments, not just the bass, and side chain all the instruments, and that'll clear stuff out of the way of your bass too. That's kind of a neat thing to do. Um, I just had a song on the radio last year. I did that with it. I'll think of it maybe before the show's over, and then. Um, I guess we should give a shout out to Bill Kamick. He's just with us everywhere, every place. Yeah, people are with uh, us all the time. Yeah, I, 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 I saw Bill's name again. Um, <clears throat> someone mentioned about the waves noise. Um, a lot of money was spent getting that noise. Learn how to use it. It's, it's actually pretty cool. It doesn't work all the time, but um, um, I, I like I like the noise. Uh, solo, it drives me crazy sometimes, but in the track, it always adds a nice little color, you know. Experiment with that, but uh, if you don't like it, don't use it. That's why the switch is there, but I find I like it sometimes. And then uh, you saw me using the New Waves MPX plug-in. Um, I really, really like it. Uh, I just got also uh, the new UAD Studer 800 version of that. Um, I haven't had them both enough time to tell you if one is better. All I know so far, I love them both. And... Uh, uh, I, I, I've been using them as kind of like little EQs, you know, like adding a little more sparkle to a hi hat or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, on, on this on this ITL, I experimented with on the kick. I'm not sure I left it on there. I think it was a little much, but uh, only because this song had a rock vibe to it. So um, um, it was good to be back in the old uh, in, in, the, the, old lair. Lair. in the, in the lair. Absolutely. Uh, I tell you, it's amazing, Herb. Uh, um, what you guys pick up. I, I wish you'd focus sometimes on what I'm saying as intently uh, as, as other factors in the room, like you, like my paint cans and whether there's uh, real question. light. <clears throat> How do you utilize your cat in your mixes? Well, a, a lot of times if I've got a singer and I need an overdub, uh -huh. you just step on the cat and you get the... Uh, I got you. You know, it's kind of like a... And then you can just adjust the pitch well, accordingly. You know, yeah, yeah, with, with, with technology, anything. Well, with waves, you can change that into a. <laughs> Absolutely. Man, I started saying the name of a singer. No, 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 the don't name do that. Of a vocal. <laughs> there you go. And do you give the cat credit in the in the credits? No, no. That cat got away. Is like 14 years old. Oh. You know? It's uh, so so. He's he's been around a lot of mixes. So he's a studio vet. He's a studio vet. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, in fact, he he he's actually. I think his. I think his pay grade right now is actually a little higher than Drew's. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would say a lot about Drew's boss. <laughs> Drew's not. Drew's not here, so we can we can lay on Drew. For you. Drew, if you're in Hawaii watching this live, which I hope you're not, um, Zan Zan said he was going to Skype us today and give us an update. So, oh, well. so that'd be a neat surprise if he does. Oh, well. So uh, uh, oh, now, now I get questions. I'm already done with the damn segment. Now you guys ask questions. Well, before. we'll come back to that. Why don't we come back to that in a second? Hello? The cat actually does all Dave's mixes. Why don't we come back to, to that as corner office? Can, uh, 
How you feel? You feel like receiving? Because it's time for you to be in a batter's box, my friend. This could be the worst batter's box we've ever had. It'll be the best. Uh, I like the I like the topic: fast food burgers. You, you know, like well, which that, one has the most meat? That's with, uh, what we that's what we set you up to be, but that's not true. Oh, really? Yeah, some of our some of our buddies on Facebook. Herb. Uh, came in. Are you ready? That improv class I took this week. Oh, really? Yeah, exactly. That's Very good. good. Man. No more exposition. You ready? Yeah, I'm okay. ready. You ready? All right. Yeah. So John Saris wants to know your favorite delay plug-in on vocals. Um, I like uh, the Massey. I forget what it's called. Their delay uh, can't go wrong with Echo Farm. Echo Farm does everything really well. Cool. Michael Van Olden, favorite plug-in EQ for adding top end above 12k. Uh, if it was 11K, I could answer that quicker. I would say uh, the E6, I love a lot. Um, E6 by McDSP. Um, Dirk Richter wants to know favorite saturation plug in for drums? Uh, you've heard Jason mention it, a lot of people, the uh, Massey L2007, but I've just recently been, been playing around with Stephen Slates, and I like that. And uh, uh, my friend Shivani just hit me to. Dynamic Mapper, uh, Pro, Pro something Dynamic Mapper. If, Shivani, if you're watching, let me know what that is. And I, I tried that, I like that too. But mm -hmm. right now my go-to, if, if you watch on the ITL, you'll see the, the 2007 across the drums. Cool. Uh, Andrew Boss wants to know your favorite acoustic guitar signal chain. Um, I'm assuming he's talking from a mixed perspective. I, I, like, uh, I like good classic tube uh, compressors. Uh, like an L2, L3, mm -hmm. or um, Fairchild, and I dump that. Um, uh, depending on uh, into an, into a Neve 1081, mm -hmm. or or there again, uh, if I want that that top end an E6. So give me. I'm going to go now to another place. Give me compressor and EQ on a couple things. Okay. Uh, vocal lead compressor. Uh, Blue Stripe 1176 waves. Uh, EQ. And EQ would be uh, the Massenberg MDW. Acoustic guitar. Uh, there again, uh, you know, Fairchild to an E6 probably, maybe okay. a 1081. The, uh, the, the UAD 1081 is good. Okay. Um, pads. Pads, uh, Ozone uh, by Isotope. Um, that, the Wide Synth, I think it's called Wide Synth preset. I tweaked that and it has the compression built in, the EQ, the. the uh, uh, probably 90% of the pads you hear, uh, that's what I have on it. Um, critical one here. Um, your favorite shampoo to get that all-day bounce? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, um, I don't know, WD-40. There you, there you go, there you go, evidently. Yeah. <laughs> back, to shine. back to compression EQs on bass. Uh, bass, I like um, 1176. Um, I've noticed that most of, most, most of them work good, just, just any of the 1176 emulators work good. And then for an EQ on bass, I like the Waves API 550. How about strings? Strings, I like um, a good, clean compressor. Um, uh, I've had good luck with the Renaissance Waves Renaissance compressor, mm -hmm. tweaking that, the smooth, and then uh, opto, not opto. Play with some of the settings. Uh, it's very clean. And then, li like, like the gentleman said about the, 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 the noise in the waves, the, the, the analog dirt, take that out. And then the, the UAD Manly Massive Passive on strings is really good, really good. I learned that technique from Ron Fair. Cool. We've got a couple more for you. Um, Alman Kasvin want to know your favorite library for drum replacements. Well, I love making drum samples, so I'd have to say my own library. I, probably 90% of the time I use mine. But if I go outside, I love Stephen Slate stuff. Stephen, okay. Stephen has really good samples. But, man, just, just sample your own. Just start your own. It's not that hard. Michael Van Olden wants to know your favorite 1073 clone on a budget. Um, that's a great, great question. I would say uh, it doesn't s seem like it, but a lot of the Waves bundles, uh, because of the amount of plugins you get, if you figure price per plug-in, I would say uh, the V-Series by Waves, and then, and then UAD is a similar thing. 
because you get so many plugins for the money. Oh, cool. uh, there, there's, there's are excellent there's also. Good Those value two. there. Yeah, I okay. think so. All right. And and then your last pitch. Uh, this was pretty obvious, straight down the middle. What's your favorite flanger? Uh, of course, the, the Herb Trowick Twizzle Flanger. Twizzle Flanger, man. <laughs> Brandon Hackler, oh, Twizzle look, Flanger. It's on the there screen. There it is, pal. <laughs> Absolutely. On Canadian. Go Canada. Cool. <laughs> Very good job. Swing, batter, batter. Very good. The Dave Pensado in the batter's box. Well, you got me on the shampoo. Uh, what's that? You got me on the shampoo. Well, you know, your hair has become a separate item of, of, uh, of topics in, in Facebook. I so. tell you what. Uh, Someone was questioning my Latinist. Uh, well, actually, they weren't. I was just in a bad mood. But with, with this hair, you you know, I'm not. You know. Actually, let me ask you a question. In in the course of a really long and and, and actually, it's a question I I always want to ask our guests. Are there mixes that stand out for you over time that you're proud of? Some more than others. Oh, absolutely. And, and how do you measure that? Do you measure that by its success, just your own personal standard? You know, you and I discussed something similar. Uh, the saddest thing about doing what we do is if one is the worst uh, mix ever and ten is the best, mm -hmm. a mix, that, a rough mix that comes in the door that's a one and I take it to like a six or mm -hmm. seven, mm -hmm. I don't get as much credit for it as if I take a seven to an eight. In gotcha. other words, I, moved, I improved one five, five steps and the other one I improved one. But, but So there's a lot of mixes that, that I, I feel like like I, I got into the producer's head and understood exactly what they wanted mm -hmm. and was able to, to, to really bring that to the forefront. Mm -hmm. And then there's some mixes I feel uh, arrogantly that I, I'm the only one that could have done it that way. Not because I'm good, but because we're all that way. Any, anything anybody does is going to have their own unique mm -hmm. stamp on it. And sometimes I'm proud of those. Um, um, so for the guys who are watching and the guys that are coming up, their own instinct is important to add to when they're mixing? I think it's vital. Yeah. When I first started out, I sucked. And I knew that I didn't have the time, because I started late in life. I was already in my 30s. Mm -hmm. I didn't have time to catch up to the greats. So I just tried to be different and try to do things that, that, that they couldn't do because they had a reputation and a, and a pretty big client base. So right. they had to kind of stick within certain parameters where I could make the drums stupid or make the guitars crazy or I could do anything and so I tried to go that route and get known for mm -hmm. for that mm -hmm. but uh, um, there n n you do get emotionally attached to a, 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 a big majority of the mixes you do and then there's there's mixes that like like be without you Mary J Blige mm -hmm. uh, Mary is just such a special human being and to be a part of a small part of the success of that record at a time when she really needed a little bit of success. You know, she'd gone through a little bit of a dry spell. And so, so that, that, that mix is one that has more special meaning to me than just as an engineer. It was, it was I, got to, I got to meet Mary. I got to hang with Mary. And, sure. And, and then when I hear that on the radio, uh, Ron Fair was an integral part of that mix. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Brian Michael Cox is... Um, the word genius gets bantied about, but he really is a gifted musician. Absolutely. And Absolutely. A lot of things came together. That's a very special mix. One, you know, I, uh, there's, there's, there's you have a lot of them. A lot of them. Let's let's go another direction. So, oh, let me just one last thought on sure. that. Like, like, uh, you and I were talking the other day, and we figured I might have done maybe six or seven thousand mixes in my life, maybe eight thousand mixes in my life, and like, Jason, and I, <coughs> Jason, and I were working on. Uh, touched my body Mariah Carey and I pulled up Mariah Carey's vocal and I just got like a little giddy schoolgirl like mm. I'm listening to Mariah Carey's vocal I'm listening to Mariah you know it's like mm -hmm. the same thing on uh, when I was working on Hollywood Tonight the, the newest Michael Jackson single I'm sitting there and and I'm, I'm in I'm in my into the lair room mm -hmm. and I've got Michael Jackson's vocal coming mm -hmm. out of my speakers mm -hmm. that, there's, there's those kind of moments that, that are very special. I, I actually had a chance to share part of that with you. We were in mm -hmm. Larrabee. Yeah. And um, Nettlesby was there. John Nettlesby oh, John was there. Oh, John was a big part of that, yeah. And John McDope from CBS. And it was just having Michael playing in the background. Yeah. And we just started trading stories from people who knew him and worked with him and worked with this project mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And it's just, you, you can't pay for those moments. No. You, you just sit no. there. It was, uh, 
It, 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 uh, no matter how long you do this, there's, if, if you truly love music, there's just those kind of special moments. And Switch gears. Okay. So given when you started mixing and now, any special techniques you use for blending digital and analog sounds and, and integrating those things? Well, I think, I think, um, I think we do that uh, a lot because now we have the ability to take the best of both worlds. It wasn't, it wasn't long ago, five years ago, that, that it was kind of an either-or process. Right. Either you went, if you were in the box, you were, you were uh, mostly digital sounding, unless you brought in some, some classic pieces of outboard gear, which, which m most of us that are doing this for a living, we have access to. Right. Now you can stay in the box and with plug-ins like, uh, like Waves, the MPX, like the UAD Studer, now you can, you can, you can add the things you like about the analog world within an entire digital format. You don't have to go buy um, um, a $60,000 Fairchild compressor. You, mm -hmm. you, can, you can, like I was talking to Michael Brower, and, and Michael fell in love with uh, Massive Passive in, uh, in the UAD series of plugins. And the, the thing he, he, was, he was emphasizing was, I can, I got a hundred of them if I want. I can open as many as I want. And now I don't have to think about, do I want to save this for this particular sound? Like, like if I'm using my one on the strings, I don't have to do that anymore. Now I can put one on every channel I want. So, right. yeah, it's, 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 I, I think it's the best time ever to be doing what we do because now you truly can choose the best of all the, all the, the two worlds, mm -hmm. digital and analog. And with digital, you now have such a wide array that some of it is now bringing it down to things that make sense, isn't it? Yeah, well, um, Phil Tan um, uh, 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 kind of taught me the importance of, of controlled economy with the choices that we're making. And then uh, you were sitting in on the, uh, we already, we already uh, talked to Alex a little bit about this, mm -hmm. Alex the Kid. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, he, he, he had a, a, a life-altering statement about... He sure did. About, uh, he sure did. I can't wait till they see that. Yeah, I'm not going to burn that, that plot. Because you, you and I were like this. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's, it's so weird. Like, every, every episode, there's something. You know, like Manny talked about mm -hmm. starting with a top energy. Mm -hmm. Tony had his things. Jason had his things. And mm -hmm. JJP had uh, s several moments that just stick with you. Bruce, mm -hmm. you know, Sardine. Mm -hmm. It's like everybody we've had on the show, there's... There's one kernel, one nugget that just stays with me forever. You know, I just finished mixing some uh, uh, Jill Scott, mm -hmm. and uh, Phil called and, and and gave me a compliment, and it was it was kind of weird because I I pretended like I was Phil when I was doing that mm -hmm. stuff. So mm -hmm. I, I, either I did a good job of being Phil, or either Phil subconsciously heard mm -hmm. something about those mixes that he would have done similar. Mm -hmm. In the um, before we wrap up. Um, because, you know, the, my manager hat, when I would be at mixes with you or with other people, mm -hmm. I, I've always found it to be a psychological intersection. There's so many competing interests. You've got the artist, you've got the label, you've got the A&R head, oh, yeah. you've got the manager, you've got the As mixer, you know, you've got the, favorite part. the producer, and you've got to handle mm -hmm. all that. Inevitably, sometimes there's conflict. Correct? Always. Right. Always. Right. Always. And, and you have to learn how to manage that conflict yeah. and keep people's trust, correct? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, 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 to give you a short answer, um, it's not unusual for the for the label to call you and say, "We want this," but don't tell the artist and producer. Absolutely. And the, and the, not unusual the, for the manager. Yeah, yeah. And then the first question I'll say, "Well, is the producer coming by?" Oh, yeah, he has to come by. And I'm like, "Well, I can't. I can't insult right. the producer, you know." So, right. uh, just to be just to be crude and rude. Um, Sometimes you just have to go, okay, look, I'm going to work for this guy again for the next hundred years. This guy's a one-and-done kind of client. Maybe I better slant it towards the guy, you know. And, but, but at the end of the day, I've been successful by putting a hierarchy on whose opinions I give the most weight to. Mm -hmm. I, I give my, the most weight to the artist, then the next most weight to the producer, and then the next most to the record company. And, and, and then... Uh, management. Last. Well, not last, but <laughs> fourth. <laughs> now I want to wrap I, up. I, I, however, I do, I do take opinions from girlfriends that drop by before managers. Always critical. Always critical. Um, fantastic. Let's uh, 
do a little homework before we get out of here. Um, uh, again, guys, our page will come up. Uh, thanks for being with us. Join us. You know, hit us at Facebook. Hit us, at, as you see on the page. Hit us at Twitter. Hit us at all the places that you know. Um, we see the show on YouTube all the time. Uh, Drew Towson in our chat room and our Vintage King folks, thanks for being there. We uh, are going to have some cool things coming up next week, some giveaways and other stuff. We can't tell you quite yet, but contests Giveaway? are coming. Yeah, we're going to, you know, we got, some, we got a really cool partner here, and we got some stuff going. This is stuff we do and we tell you later. So stay tuned. Some good stuff coming up, some great guests coming up, some great ITLs coming up. Um, we're going to amplify the show and take it to the next level. And we want you, we love your comments. There's so many things that we're getting about telling your friends. And I, I got something from SAE, uh, one of the students at SAE. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's funny, I said, thanks for watching. And, you know, tell your friends. He said, tell all my friends. All my friends watch. And we all just, so we're so honored, guys. Thank you. Um, stay tuned. We're going to try to keep bringing you the noise. Uh, my friend, uh, you don't have your polo logo, but that's okay. It's on your, it's on your bag. <laughs> take, take us home. Take us out of here. Okay, we're, we're, we're ending the show, or am I, we are, I'm not going to get to do another question? And you, you can do one quick question, and then, then we got to go. So, I can't see. Will's, Will's... Want me to ask you a oh, question? Oh, there we go. Uh, i got a question for you. Yeah. Okay, you ready? This, yeah. is, this is a really complicated technical one. In your studio, what's your favorite color of lava lamp? Uh, at Laramie or at, at uh, Vibrant Street? Both. Uh, I like those bright green ones, as you can tell. And why? Because they're bright green. There you go. <laughs> now say goodnight. I <laughs> <laughs> hey, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next week, uh, as you can tell, we got caught a little short this week with, with the guests not being here, but I had a lot of fun. And uh, I thought that was the best batter's box we've done yet. Because it was you, pal. <laughs> but, it, but it was also the picture. <laughs> the picture was cool. The picture had a lot to do with it. Say goodnight. All right, guys. See you guys. See you next week. Bye bye.